Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a federal jury will begin deliberations today in the trial of the three former Minneapolis police officers accused of violating George Floyd's civil rights. It's all downhill from here. Temperature wise, we'll check in with Mike Osterhage coming up because the cooler air has begun to arrive. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It is February 23rd. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, definitely a lot colder today than it was yesterday. I literally had a conversation with, with myself by the coat closet. It you was did. one of those devil <laughs> angel on the shoulders things. I was like, do I really need this heavier jacket? The devil's like, no, you don't, you wimp. The other one's like, listen to what Mike said. <laughs> yes, we did listen to you. I went with a heavy coat this morning. Yeah, yeah it's I a did pretty too. good idea because even though it's relatively milder right now. It's just going to continue like I said downhill slide all day long. So by late afternoon, it's going to be uh, about mid 30s mm -hmm. and probably freezing in parts of the hill country wow. already. So for and that's during the middle of the day yeah. today even. And then you got the wind on top of that. So yeah. we got wind chills to deal with and we're not seeing anything as far as any rain as of right now, but there is the chance for a couple of uh, some light showers around the area and with temperatures flirting with freezing over the next couple of days, maybe some light ice, but rain is the, the moisture is not really there. More on that coming up. Uh, temperatures in the 40s, we got this, that's a bad reading right there around uh, Helotus, but uh, 40s and 50s, we have dropped down already about uh, four or five degrees just in the past hour, hour and a half out there at the airport. Wind is out of the north at 15, 20 miles per hour approximately. Wind gust 25 to 30, and we do have wind chills to deal with right now. 41 at the airport, 33 is what it feels like at Kerrville, 36 in Balverde. So yeah, wind chills are definitely going to be a big part of what you're going to be, what's going to be greeting you throughout the day. Mold was moderate yesterday. Everything else on the light side, of course, update account is going to come out just after seven o'clock this morning and throughout the uh, the rest of today. Going to go with about 45 in the next couple of hours, and then again, temperatures continue to just drop down mid 30s after school, obviously cooler in the hill country. There will be uh, areas that are already going to be touching freezing by later on today. A couple of very light, light showers. And again, the ground is extremely warm. You know, we were up in mid 80s yesterday, the day before that. Uh, maybe some of the elevated uh, surfaces could have a little bit of freezing rain on them. But again, moisture is extremely limited with this. We do have a better rain chance, though, a little bit later on in the forecast. Talk about that and closer look at the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after San Antonio police say he was shot several times overnight. Happened just after midnight in the parking lot of a sports bar located in the 2100 block of Southeast Loop 410 near Highway 87. SAPD says an argument between the victim and another man spilled out into the parking lot outside. And that's when police say the suspect pulled a gun and shot the victim several times in the chest. SAPD says the suspect dropped the gun and ran towards a Walmart and was later detained by officers. The victim is in critical condition at a hospital. Turning now to the pandemic, Metro Health is reporting that three people have died from COVID. It's also reporting 544 new cases. Right now, 469 COVID patients are in the hospital. 132 of them are in the ICU and 65 are on ventilators. In your morning headlines, the East-West face-off over Ukraine has escalated dramatically with Russian lawmakers giving President Vladimir Putin permission to use military force outside his country. President Joe Biden and European leaders are responding by slapping sanctions on Russian oligarchs and banks. Both leaders signaled that an even bigger confrontation could lie ahead. Putin has 150,000 troops standing by on three sides of Ukraine. So far, Biden says he's held back on the toughest sanctions that could cause economic turmoil for Russia, but would proceed if uh, there is further aggression. 19 Austin police officers have been indicted for their actions during the 2020 George Floyd protests and riots. Documents say the officers each faced two counts of aggravated assault by a public servant. They are accused of intentionally, knowingly, and recklessly causing serious bodily harm. Last week, the Travis County District Attorney said that multiple indictments were forthcoming. The DA said many protesters injured by the officers were innocent bystanders. If convicted, the officers could face five to 99 years of life in prison and a potential fine of up to $10,000. Austin's police chief says he stands by the officers and believes their conduct did not rise to the level of a criminal violation. Now to the closing arguments at the trial of three former police officers charged in the death of George Floyd. Yeah, we're getting new insight of what happened on that street in Minneapolis back in 2020. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. 
Jury deliberations are set to begin today in the case against three former Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's death. Tutau, Alexander King, and Thomas Lane are charged with depriving Floyd of his civil rights by failing to administer aid when Officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. They're going to look at each individual officer's actions, what they did, what they didn't do during the time in which they were involved with Mr. Floyd. During closing arguments Tuesday, prosecutors said the officers chose to do nothing as Floyd died. And they accuse Officer Tao, Chauvin's partner, of doing nothing to stop the crime in front of him, saying instead he had chosen to argue and mock people who tried to intervene. Tao's lawyer called Floyd's death a tragic event, but said a tragedy is not a crime. This particular instance, I don't think speaks to that because we have innocent bystanders with no training at all that were aware that something was amiss. Prosecutors also showed video of King casually picking gravel from the tire of a police SUV as Chauvin mocked Floyd's pleas for help. Although Lane voiced concern for Floyd, prosecutors say Lane did nothing to give him medical aid. Defense attorneys placed the blame on Chauvin, the senior officer, arguing he took command of the scene. The former officers with him that day now face life in prison if convicted, but legal experts say the verdicts could vary. Each person has a level of responsibility, and these charges determine where each person lies on that level of responsibility. So you can absolutely see varying verdicts. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 436, 47 degrees for now, but it will be dropping. That's right. Some San Antonio's first players taking some rodeo action at the AT&T Center last night. We're going to take a look at some extreme bull riding. Checking traffic. It's uh, very early right now. See how things are looking out there with uh, 37 and Jones Avenue. A little shake to the camera there with those winds picking up behind that cold front here in the Alamo City. Yeah, and taking a look outside with live cam, already cold in the 40s, but yes, like Mark said, it's going to get even colder. Please send your little one with the jacket to school today. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The 2022 All-Star break continues through today before resuming normal team activities tomorrow. That means for the Spurs getting ready to resume their rodeo road trip when they travel to Washington to face the Wizards on Friday. Right now, the Spurs are in the 11th position in the Western Conference, two back of the Trailblazers. There are only 23 games left in the regular season when the NBA resumes its season, and that is enough to give the Silver and Black a little bit of a shot. All right, Friday's game against the Wizards set for 6 o'clock at Capital One Center in D.C. We have reached third round of the girls high school basketball playoff 6A Clark taking on Johnson Northside Sports Gym Jaguars trying to rally midway through the second off the miss to see her McDermott is there for the rebound put back to make it an eight point game but the Cougars answer right back Ramsey Robledo kicks it out to Alia Roberson for the triple Clark advances to the regional semis with a 62 52 victory. Next on the court, defending state champion Antonian boys opening up their playoff run against the Panthers. Apache's putting on a show in the first quarter. Isaiah Fox forced the steal, keeps the ball, finishes by banking in the land for Antonian's first points of the game. Then watch this. Javier Martinez comes up loose ball, rifles a pass over to Noah Wernsman on the wing for a triple. Antonian cruises into the next round with a 72 to 41 victory. Well, before they resume their rodeo road trip later this week, Keldon Johnson and Lonnie Walker were taking in the San Antonio rodeo last night. They were treated to some extreme bull riding. They don't call it extreme for nothing. Shad Wynn on reality check, and this is what you call getting thrown out of the arena. He just, he's okay. Here's your champ. He's Josh Frost on board Jester, and this is no joke. About an 88 and a half for the winning ride after three rounds of competition plus the finals. And that's a look at morning sports. Goodness. Very. I, I'm amazed every time we play this video. I am too. It's quite the show, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Time now, 441 and 47 degrees for now. Coming up next, how higher gas prices are affecting parts of the nation worse than others. And welcome back. It's 444. Analysts are expecting gas prices to hit a record high in California very soon. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. 
In this morning's GMA First Look. They're too high. Makes commuting difficult. I fill up my tank three times a week. I used to only put 60 and now I put about 100. Crazy, crazy gas prices. The pain at the pump is real. The average price per gallon is $3.53. That's the highest since 2014. And experts expect prices to keep rising. The national average is primed to hit that $4 a gallon mark. The only question is when. So with no relief in sight, there are some tricks to saving money the next time you need to fill up that tank. Use cruise control on the highways. The constant stopping and going could actually use more gas and cost you more. Experts also say try to avoid filling up in downtown areas. Generally, prices are lower the further away you get from large population centers. And we'll have all the tips to help save you money coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, Atlanta. 445. Well, this seemed almost unthinkable just one year ago. CPS Energy is opening itself up for an outside review. This comes after some council members called for an independent review of the utility in the lead up to the vote that approved a rate increase for customers. Garrett Berger has more. From its financial health to its customer engagement to its organizational culture, CPS Energy has put out a request for proposal or RFP from outside groups that can come in to review five different areas of its operations. This is a big step right now, so All right, I'm excited. Council members Mario Bravo and Melissa Cabello Haverda had both pushed for outside audits of the utility, using the rate increase vote in January to help extract some promises. I was able to meet with enough of the board members uh, and get buy-in on this that I felt very comfortable with it, and I'm glad that they're following through on it. Now they're keeping an eye on how CPS moves forward. I will hold them accountable for it because I'm being held accountable for it too. The CPS Board of Trustees, we the ones who issue the contracts for the outside reviews and get the reports. Staff will have a very limited role in reviewing the bids, the board vice chair says, but they will not have a say in the final reports. Their role, staff, is to provide input, not to influence the outcome of these uh, evaluations. But still, it amounts to CPS commissioning its own review. Right now, I, I don't have any qualms about it, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping eagle eyes on it, making sure that, that there aren't any missteps and there aren't any, um, we're not seeing any you know, kind of closing of the door. We need to keep it all out in the open. The board is expected to award the contracts for each of these sections by July 1st. Then the vendors will have 120 days to report directly back to the board. At CPS Energy, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Let's check traffic at 447. Uh, no major slowdowns around town. Still very, very light traffic at 37 and Jones. We have our normal construction zones, and I'm seeing some minor slowdowns on Bandera Road in the Leon Valley area, but that is just about it for now. Not too bad. Now it's kind of like you this morning. I was sort of looking at the lighter jacket. I was like, no, better go for the heavy jacket. Yeah, we're, we're going to kind of go with this whole theme here, Mike, that it's going to get colder, significantly yeah. colder as the day and evening go on. Yep, and temperatures will just continue the slow, steady decline throughout the day. The wind is going to be strong all day long, and then we'll start to see a couple of uh, light little sprinkly showers. There's nothing showing up on radar as of right now, and you can see there's plenty of uh, clouds out there, and boy, that... Uh, that front move through right on schedule yesterday. All right, current wind chill temperatures 41 in town, 31 now at Kerrville, 37 in Balverde. Again, there's something wrong with this thermometer out there in Helota, so we just have to ignore that. Um, all the, the readings have been just kind of way out of whack, but temperatures, even though we have wind chills or temperatures in the 50s right now, wind chill formulas don't come into play when you're above 50. Uh, those numbers will continue to drop from Honda over towards Stinson down around Pleasanton, so just get ready. So here's the uh, computer model, and this one I think does a good job as far as depicting not only uh, what form the precipitation is going to be in, but also the fact that there's not going to be a whole heck of a lot of it. It does have some of this freezing on contact up in portions of the hill country. But again, rain chances are not that great or precipitation chances are not that great. There will be some again in portions of the hill country. The ground itself is very, very warm. As we were saying off the top of the show, uh, you know, yesterday 85 for a high temperature. Monday we were in uh, at 85 degrees as well. So we're not going to have to worry about anything on the actual surfaces, elevated surfaces, possibly, but again, rainfall amounts are going to be so very light, although it doesn't take much, obviously. Uh, this is going to go through. We're going to keep a lot of clouds around through Thursday. Friday morning also, there could be still a little bit of uh, some leftover rain. Now, north of the hill country, there is a winter weather advisory that does not include any of our area. 
Weather Service did issue a statement just saying, yes, there is the chance for some light freezing rain in portions of the hill country uh, throughout the rest of today and even into tomorrow. But again, very small chance for that. Wind chill forecast, though, yeah, this is going to be something that you're really going to have to pay attention to because, well, you don't have to pay attention. It'll get your attention because wind chills are definitely going to be sticking around here for the next couple of days. It is going to be very, very breezy over the next couple of days. Nothing is showing up on radar right now as far as any precipitation around here. There's a little bit of uh, some frozen stuff further up there to the north. It's going to be a mess all the way in toward the uh, mid Mississippi Valley, but also take note. Here's the flow upstairs in the atmosphere coming in here out of the southwest. This again, we've been saying this the past couple days. The layer of cold air down here at the surface is very, very shallow, very small layer. You go up maybe a thousand feet, uh, 1500 feet, and temperatures are going to be up in the 50s and even close to the 60s. So that is why uh, it, it's a real tricky forecast as far as what is going to be falling. Um, is it the layer of cold air thick enough to have any precipitation freeze on contact. Yes, that is a, a possibility, but um, it's not going to be anything like we had a few weeks ago. 39 degrees today at noon, some light rain, a little bit of mix up to the north, and then later on this afternoon we continue to drop down and that 36 may be a little on the warm side, light rain, some mix up to the north, and then over the next couple of days we will have the chance for a little bit of freezing rain primarily up to the north. That does include Northern fringes of Bear County, 30% uh, 20% chance of showers on Friday Again, rain chances are not that great. Then we get into Saturday and a slightly better chance for some rain all in the form of rain. It's going to be just kind of raw temperatures only in the 40s all the way through Saturday, finally back up to 60 by Sunday. Hmm. OK, so a little bit more March like by the first day of March. Yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> February just wanted to hold on to that winter month. <laughs> it's death grip. Right. 85, <laughs> then chance of freezing rain. Go figure. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll hang in there, folks. Stay bundle up, stay warm. 451, about 46 degrees. And still ahead of daytime talk shows coming to an end, plus Encanto's famous song is still breaking records. Big three numbers. 403 Fireball 1, Daily 4, 3633 3, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 1, 13, 17, 28, 35. And your Mega Million, 6, 17, 22, 57, 62, Mega Ball 3, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. Welcome back. Five Till, Netflix debuting its new Viking series, plus a new record for Bruno. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Get ready to go back to the cold, stormy sea. Vikings Valhalla picks up about 150 years after the events of the History Channel Vikings series. Showrunner Jeb Stewart tells me it's the year 1002 AD, and the King of England orders the St. Bryce's Day Massacre to exterminate the Vikings, who were divided at the time between pagan and Christian, and Stewart says it didn't work. The Vikings, as in many, many times in American culture, you know, you got the right and the left, you got the Democrats and Republicans, and they're all fighting in their each other's throats. But then when there's an attack from the outside, you suddenly become American again. And that's actually what happened with the with the Vikings. Vikings Valhalla premieres Friday on Netflix. Wendy Williams namesake daytime talk show is ending. The show has featured guest hosts since the start of season 13 last September. Williams out while she battles health problems, which included a case of COVID-19. Now the show and time slot will go to Sherry Shepard. The former The View co-host has been one of Williams' fill-in hosts. We don't talk about Bruno, no, no. A new record for Bruno. The song We Don't Talk About Bruno from the Disney film Encanto tops the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart for a fourth week. The longest any song from a Disney movie, live action or animated, has been number one. And happy birthday, Mary Poppins. Actress Emily Blunt is 39 today, while Shark Tank's Damon John is 53. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 456 and 46 degrees for now. The face-off over Ukraine escalating now that Russia's president has permission by his parliament to use military force. We'll have the latest on how the rest of the world is responding. Plus, Sony shows off its latest VR headset. We're going to take a look at its features coming up in Tech Bytes. And checking on the roads one more time, US 90 at General McMullen. There's 410 at Broadway's. Stephen Cavazos is in the studio. He will scan the cameras around town and get all of us up to speed coming up in our next half hour. Live from KSAT 12. 
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Russia appears to be still building up more troops along the Ukraine border amid global backlash and more severe economic sanctions. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with the live can, we're already starting cooler than yesterday at 46 degrees, but just wait, those temperatures are going to drop even more. Yeah, if you listen carefully, you hear Mother Nature's evil laugh. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It <laughs> is me Wednesday. It is February 23rd. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, you might be right if we listen closely. Uh, you know, I definitely listen to Mike and I put aside uh, my daughter's jacket so she will not forget this morning. I think the theme here for everyone this morning is bundle up, buttercup. Yep. Now, right now, we're just at our normal low temperature, which is in the, the mid 40s, mid to upper 40s around here. Then you got the wind to deal with, and uh, temperatures are only going to continue to drop down. We've actually dropped about uh, six, seven degrees or so since in the past couple of hours. Wind out of the north at 10 and is gusting from there. Still got some very, very dry air with dew points down in the upper 20s. And as far as the rest of today, yep, temperatures just continue. Their downward slide is just a nice, steady drop down the hill and will be right around mid 30s even colder than that obviously in the hill country by later on this afternoon by dinner time and as far as the aquifer yesterday it did drop down six tenths of a foot and then the allergens moles on the moderate side and then we had light amounts of everything else of course mountain cedar still kind of hanging on in there and we've got some windy conditions out there we'll see what the uh, updated count shows later on this morning when that comes out wind chill temperatures winds we got some gusts as well about uh, say 20 25 30 miles per hour and it's going to be fairly blustery throughout the rest of today with those wind gusts coming in here out of the north in behind that front and then that gives us wind chill temperatures that are down right around 30 now Kerrville 37 Bolverde 31 at Bernie stage and it's not going to improve all that much there is a winter weather advisory but just north of our area there is kind of a mention of the chance for some light freezing drizzle light freezing rain in portions of the hill country but Rain chances overall are not that great. There's not a lot of moisture to work with this with this. So cloudy, windy temperatures will are cold and will get colder throughout the rest of uh, the morning as well as the rest of today. Some light rain may be mixed with a little bit of freezing rain in portions of the hill country. Same thing tomorrow. Temperatures will be starting off close to freezing and then again only the upper 30s, maybe cracking 40 degrees tomorrow. Same thing on Friday, a little bit lesser chance for some rain. Better shot at some showers on Saturday. It's going to be a cold and just kind of a raw day on Saturday. And finally, we'll start to warm up around here by Sunday. All the details forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, did you wear your heavy coat this morning, sir? I, I did. I always listen to you, Mike. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's get a look at the roadways right now. Looks like we have someone uh, that is experiencing some car trouble off 281 at St. Mary's. We'll find out what's going on there. But overall, the morning is shaping up to be pretty quiet right now. There's 37 at Southeast Military, very empty out there, but no other problems to detect. Really, it's just a quiet start to this Wednesday morning, which we love to say, especially as we're getting the morning rolling here. But let's go ahead and take you to our map, because as you see right there, there was a crash that was reported off of 281 near 410, uh, closer to the airport. Now that crash came in just after four this morning. It does appear on the trans guide cameras that it may have just cleared out. So that's some good news for travelers that may have to head in that direction in the next few moments. But if your travels are taking you right here through San Antonio, well, we have those inbound times for you this morning. Right now, I-10 eastbound coming in from Bernie to downtown. It's 25 minutes. And if you're coming in from 281 and Bolverde on those southbound lanes, 26 and 25 on 35 coming in from New Braunfels to downtown San Antonio. So no concerns in those inbound times. So just remember to take it easy out on the roadways. But look, we have some flashing lights there. That's some construction taking place off 410 at State Highway 151. We'll let you know how long that's going to be going on for coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will be in San Antonio later this morning. We will have team coverage for her visit throughout the day, and our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what we can expect from the visit. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yeah, so the First Lady visited Houston for her, her cancer research in November, and now she's making her way for the same reason, and she'll be here later this morning at Joint Base at San Antonio Kelly Field, where she arrives around 11 a.m. Then she will head to the Mays Cancer Center Home of UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center.
The trip to Military City USA includes a look at how cancer health disparities are impacting the Latino community. This is part of the Biden-Harris administration's Cancer Moonshot Initiative. The First Lady will also visit Joint Base San Antonio Lackland to tour a child development center and participate in a listening session there. The session will be focused on support of military children with disabilities. So we have two teams covering her five and a half hour visit. Just make sure to follow it on KSAT on air and online. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. You're about to see a lot more campaign ads. The primaries are less than a week away and the race for the Texas 28th Congressional District is intensifying. Between Democrats and Republicans, there are 10 candidates in the race, but Democrats Jessica Cisneros and Henry Cuellar are getting the most attention. Cisneros is trying to unseat Cuellar, who has been in Congress since 2005. Last night, she brought Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren to East San Antonio to campaign on her behalf. I think the people of Texas understand that someone who actually fights for health care for everyone is the kind of person who will fight for them. We're offering an alternative vision for what South Texas can be, that we can have an area that has health care, that has good paying jobs, good paying union jobs. During the rally, Cisneros highlighted the differences between she and her Democratic opponent, saying she supports reproductive rights and the Green New Deal. Cuellar has slammed Cisneros' positions, arguing her policies would kill jobs in the oil and gas industry. She wants to eliminate 40,000 jobs uh, in my congressional district. Uh, that not only cuts jobs, but that also affects the, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the tax base for school districts. In 2020, Cuellar beats Cisneros by four points in the primary. If he wins next week's primary, he's likely to stay in Congress since the district is heavily Democratic. In other news, this morning, thousands of San Antonio Housing Authority residents are facing eviction if they can't pay past due rent. Saha's eviction moratorium ends February 28th. Since March of 2020, it's given its tenants a break, and that moratorium has been extended five times, right now almost $5 million in back due, rent rather, is due. We're trying to balance, um, you know, what the community is doing, uh, what other um, utility companies are doing. We said it's time. Our goal is not to evict um, our families. Our goal is to keep them housed, but they have to communicate. Brandy Perez with Saha says they'll work to work out a repayment plan with families that can help apply for rental assistance. You can apply for the city's emergency housing assistance program, but you need to act quickly. The deadline March 1st. After that, no more applications will be accepted because of funding availability. 507 fears of a larger Russian attack remain this morning after President Biden declared for the first time yesterday that Putin has begun his military invasion of Ukraine. The president also unveiling what he says is the first of many significant economic sanctions meant to hurt Russia. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, the international backlash against Russia intensifying as new video shows military vehicles in Russian-controlled separatist regions of eastern Ukraine. The Ukraine government says Russia-backed rebels are firing into government-held areas, appearing to be stoking a military action and a pretext for Russia to use for war. New images from private satellite company Maxar shows a buildup of Russian military supplies near Ukraine's border. The U.S. believes the Kremlin is also stocking up on blood supplies. You don't need blood unless you plan on starting a war. 800 additional U.S. troops, along with fighter jets and helicopters, are being repositioned to support NATO allies in the region. President Biden condemning what he says is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. In response, the U.S. is imposing punishing sanctions on Russian banks, business elites and their families. The Kremlin is also blocked from trading on American and European markets. No Russian financial institution is safe if the invasion proceeds. Germany went ahead and froze this crucial natural gas pipeline known as Nord Stream 2, which runs from western Siberia into Germany. That will also have a big impact on Russia. The move comes after President Vladimir Putin declared two Russian-backed separatist regions in eastern Ukraine as independent and then deployed his military in the so-called Donbass region, where rebel forces control about a third of the land. Analysts say Putin may also also try to claim more of the region. His plan all along has been to invade Ukraine. President Biden threatening more sanctions if Russia doesn't back down. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare 
new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors. And President Biden also warns that sanctions against Russia to, quote, defend freedom will cost Americans here some pain at the gas pump. Gas prices have already jumped more than 20 percent in the last month. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And about a minute ago, CNN reported a state of emergency has been introduced all across parts of Ukraine under government control. Right now it's 510, 45 degrees. Also still ahead, Meta is now launching Facebook Reels to more than 150 countries. Up next, why Animal Care Services had to seize more than 50 cats at a home on San Antonio's west side. And taking a look outside with live pan, this will be mild compared to later today, 45 degrees for now. We'll be right back. 513, back to local news. Animal Care Services had to remove dozens of cats from a house over on Salinas. That's on the west side of San Antonio, and total crews found 57 cats and one dog in the home. Crews say some were inside, others were in a shed in the home's backyard, and they're not calling this an animal cruelty case, but they were concerned about the living conditions. There's a very uh, small path that you're actually able to walk inside the house. And yes, there's there's animal feces, urine all over the place. Animal Care Services has been watching the home since November, and that's when it was inspected. So the city's dangerous assessment response team was able to get a warrant to go inside the home. Now, I understand the home's owner was not home at the time, but was aware of this operation taking place. 514, about 45 degrees. And still ahead, a first look at PlayStation's new VR headset. We'll tell you about Spotify's dashboard accessory now available. Need long-lasting freshness? Try Febreze Unstoppable's Touch Fabric Spray. It doesn't just eliminate odors. Simply shake and spray to unlock the breakthrough power of touch-activated scent technology that lasts even hours later. That's because Febreze Touch stores scent in your fabrics, so you get bursts of freshness with every touch. Your whole world will come alive. Welcome home to fresh with Febreze Touch. Breathe, Febreze, la, 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 la. With age comes more. Get more with Neutrogena Retinol Pro Plus, a powerful 0.5% retinol that's also gentle on skin for wrinkle results in one week. Neutrogena for people with skin. Just about 518, Facebook expanding its short form video format reels to over 150 countries. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Facebook is going global with its reels. The platform, which works a lot like TikTok, is now available in more than 150 countries. Facebook is also adding new editing features to reels, including a video clipping tool handy for creators who publish live or long form content. Next, Sony has revealed its newest virtual reality headset. The company says the white and black color scheme was designed with the PlayStation 5 in mind. It connects to the console with a single cable. No word on a release date or cost. And a new thing for American Spotify users. The streaming services Car Thing is available in the US. The dashboard accessory controls Spotify on your phone. It's selling for $90, up $10 over the price first advertised in the fall. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 518. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. How are the roads looking? Not bad, not bad. But uh, these shots at Transguide, you can see that traffic's moving, but not a whole lot of people out there this morning. It is still a very young start, but we do have that stall still out there at 281 at St. Mary's, so you got to watch out for that driver that may be having car trouble out there. But other than that, these shots at Transguide do show that the morning is shaping up to be very quiet. But we are keeping our eye on a few things. Let's go ahead and just start with that bird's eye view of the map, because as you see, we see more green out here. But as we bring you in a little bit, up further here off 35. That's where we're spotting a crash off those northbound lanes right at Ritterman Road. Thankfully, it's not causing issues for drivers that are driving up on 35, but you got to watch out for those flashing lights whenever you see them. We're going to see if we can get a shot from Transguide and show you how the conditions are looking out over there. But earlier, we did show you a shot off of 410 at State Highway 151, some construction. Let's take that drive over there because that road work actually started on February 21st. 
21st, that is, pardon me. Uh, there is some bridge work that's been going on out there, so they're actually working on the columns now. Keep in mind, this started again on Monday, but we'll be wrapping up on February 28th, so we still have some time to go. It is an overnight deal, 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Right now, you'll see a double, north, double northbound main lane closure from Ingram Road to Culebra Road. So again, something to be on the lookout for, but we're watching these roads right over here. Shaky shot there at 37 at Hackberry. The morning is getting going, guys. Thank you, Stephen. And the temperatures will dip down once yep. again. Yep, we'll probably lose at least, we're going to lose at least 10 degrees throughout the course of the day, and in some cases, even more than that. And that shaky camera mm -hmm. more than likely is because of the wind out there. We've got a pretty good breeze going on right now. Lots of clouds, and get used to seeing plenty of clouds and not a heck of a lot of sunshine over the next couple of days. So here's the situation that we are dealing with. We've got cold air that's moving on in here, but it is a very, very shallow layer of cold air. As a matter of fact, you go up thousand feet, maybe. I hear Stevens. Are... I hear a bunch of microphones open. Sorry, I just wanted. Everybody's there. There we I go. Thought, I thought it was like, okay. behind you. <laughs> All the focus on me, folks. No, uh, go up about a thousand feet or so in the atmosphere, and temperatures go up into the the 50s and even warmer than that. So we've got this very warm layer. Anything that falls is going to be in liquid form. That's not, not going to have time to refreeze before it hits the ground. So with uh, some of these temperatures that are going to be right around freezing, some of that rain can freeze on contact, but. There's not going to be a heck of a lot of uh, precipitation out there. There's not a lot of moisture to deal with. Temperatures right now, everybody is above freezing. These are the actual air temperatures, but then you factor in the wind chill. It feels like 29 at Bernie Stage, also uh, Kerrville, 41 here in town. And here's the uh, computer model. And this is the, the rapid update model, which I think does a pretty good job as far as depicting the fact that there's not going to be a heck of a lot of uh, moisture out there. Some freezing rain is possible on some of the elevated surfaces. The ground is very warm thanks to the past couple of days, but uh, you know, you're looking at maybe some overpasses, um, wires, signs, things like that. And this is going to continue in through tomorrow. Even in the Northern Bear County, there is that chance, albeit a very small chance. We will see a, somewhat of a break in the action on Friday, and then rain chances are going to move back in here on Saturday. Uh, temperatures will be above freezing, but that's going to be the better chance, it looks like, for some rain. As far as wind chills, yeah, we're going to keep them <laughs> very cold. It's just going to be biting all day long into tomorrow, throughout the day tomorrow, as well as on Friday. Very, very cold wind chills around here, and that we're really not going to warm up that much until about Sunday when we finally get back into the uh, 60 degree range for a high temperature and we'll see more sunshine on Sunday. Noon today, 39 degrees. A little bit of mix is possible up to the north with some of those light uh, rain showers and same thing later on this afternoon. Very, very light rain showers, possibly some of that freezing rain up to the north. 36 degrees by late afternoon, even colder than that, obviously up to the north. And then the next couple of mornings, we're going to be down right around freezing just below that. It's going to be windy the next couple of days and we'll have small rain chances out there. Doesn't take much, obviously, for something to uh, freeze on contact. 40 for high temperature tomorrow as well as Friday, 45 on Saturday. Better rain chance on Saturday and then finally back up to 60 by Sunday. Wow. Yep. <laughs> True February. Yes. Started off mm -hmm. cold and icy. Get up into the you know mid and upper 80s and 90s and end the month very cold and maybe a little bit of ice here. Now Mother Nature's going to put a bow on this month for sure. <laughs> Teeth chattering. Thank you Mike. 523 about 45 degrees. And the maker of the film Nightmare Alley is set to receive a big award and NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace talks about a new docuseries that's next in your morning spotlight. Today's entertainment news takes us from the silver screen to the racetrack. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Thank you, thank you. Gracias. Guillermo del Toro is receiving an honor named for a Hollywood legend. The Advanced Imaging Society is giving the Nightmare Alley filmmaker its first ever Gene Kelly Visionary Award. The Society's president notes Kelly was a film pioneer, innovating with camera use, lighting, choreography and more, and says del Toro embodies the same spirit. The Oscar winner will be honored March 4th. Coming into the 2021 season, the intensity, all the media trying to balance all that has been super tough. The docuseries Race follows Bubba Wallace, NASCAR's only current black full-time Cup Series driver, as he tries to balance racing and speaking out about racial justice. It's not just 
going to work one day. It's not going to work on Sunday and that's it. It's, it's a lot throughout the weeks and throughout the days and that you have to be comfortable with. And, and it teaches you a lot too. Race Bubba Wallace is now streaming on Netflix. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 45 degrees. Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's killing. We still had a local World War II veteran celebrating a big birthday. Jonathan Cotto has more. And are you ready for some hard Mountain Dew? We're going to tell you about this new spiked seltzer that has already launched in several states. A bar fight becomes a bar shooting. Now one man's in the hospital, another one answering to police. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll have that story. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, you can see that wind is blowing and Katrina shot 45 degrees this morning and things will only get colder. Good morning, it's Wednesday the 23rd and let's just say this, we've already hit our high temperature for the day. <laughs> yes, so enjoy <laughs> this 45 degrees for now. Those temperatures are dipping. And that's already dipped down because we were in the 50s a couple of hours ago. And uh, yeah, it will continue to get colder. We will lose at least about 10 degrees throughout the course of the day. 46 out there at the airport, dew points at 29. So very, very dry air. Wind out of the north at 10 miles per hour. But then we've got some gusts on top of that. Gusting to 22 at Bernie Stage, 23 at the airport, Port SA 25 and close to 30 at Stinson. And it's going to stay like this throughout the rest of the day. So bundle up because we have wind chill temperatures. 29 Bernie stage Kerrville and it feels like 34 right now at Balverde and we do have moderate mold. Mountain Cedar was hanging in there yesterday. We'll see what happens with the updated count later on today with these windy conditions. If they're going to be, uh, you know, one last shake to the trees or have the, has the season finally come to an end. Temperatures continue to drop down and this actually may be a little on the warm side, 36 degrees, but we are going to be close to uh, freezing portions of the, the hill country and we will continue with a little bit of light rain and then some of that uh, is possible to be freezing rain and freezing on contact up in portions of the hill country later on today. And again, those winds out of the north are 15 to 25 miles per hour. So wind chills are definitely going to be something to get your attention not only today, but the next couple of days. It's going to stay cold all the way through the rest of the week and the first portion of the weekend with some better rain chances, though, going into the first half of the weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Two hands on the steering wheel if you're driving a big truck today, sir. And both eyes on the road, Mike. Right now, we are taking a look at the empty roads here off 37 at Southeast Military. There's 37 at Jones Avenue. Does look like the morning started off pretty tranquil as we're getting the day going, but there are some things to be on the lookout for. Let's go ahead and take you to the map where we have this crash that was reported off I-35 northbound near Riddiman Road. Uh, now, not seeing any shots from Transguide showing any flashing lights or activity out there, but this is definitely something drivers are going to want to be on the lookout for, especially especially if their travels take them through this area. Again, we'll watch it closely and we'll let you know how that impacts that drive time. But let's get that wider look at the map. As you can see, no other issues have been reported. Some construction spots that look like the crews are wrapping up at. But other than that, the drive is going to be nice and easy at this hour. And if you're traveling into San Antonio, the same goes there. Right now, I-10 from Seguin, pretty green to downtown San Antonio in those westbound lanes with 29 minutes at this hour. 23 if you're coming in from Lavernia and 87. And right now, we're looking at 27 minutes coming in from Floresville to downtown San Antonio. So we're not really concerned about that, but we are going to be looking at that crash off of 35 and we'll give you all those updates. That's going to be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say what happened inside a bar did not stay there. They say a disagreement between two bar customers led to the shooting in a parking lot. This happened overnight on the east side of town near Loop 410 and Rigsby Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand one man is in the hospital. Well, that's right. Based on what police say, he's in critical condition. The other man, meanwhile, is in custody. The police found them in the parking lot here outside uh, JD's sports bar this morning. They, the wounded man was uh, outside here in the parking lot. The 1230 this morning is when they found them. That's near Loop 410 and Rigsby. Police say that uh, the two men had been involved in an argument inside the bar. The trouble then spilled outside and ended with that other man pulling a gun and firing. The victim was hit several times. Police say the shooter then took off running, dropping the gun along the way. Officers did find him and the gun nearby, took him into custody. And again, that wounded man in critical condition this morning. 
Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. If you're a San Antonio Independent School District family, you can take part in a free food drive today. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with what you need to know. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. This is a monthly event for the district and SEISD has partnered with the San Antonio Food Bank for a food distribution event at Alamo Stadium this morning. The only qualification families need to receive food is to be a SAISD family. These events happen once a month where the San Antonio Food Bank teams up with the district to help SAISD families in need. Distribution is on a first come first served basis while supplies last. If you have any questions about this distribution event, SCISD families can contact their family engagement and community representative. The drive starts at 9 o'clock this morning, happening at 110 to let a drive at Alamo Stadium. These drives happen once a month at different locations throughout the district. You can find a list of all of those locations and more information just by heading to SAISD.net. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. 535 jury deliberations expected to begin this morning in the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's 2020 killing. The prosecution and defense made their final pitches to jurors before closing arguments concluded. As Mandy Gaither reports, the men could face up to life in prison if convicted. It's the final stages of the federal trial for three former Minneapolis officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights. In closing arguments, prosecutors told the jury Thomas Lane, J. Alexander King, and Tu Tao were all aware that unreasonable force was being used on Floyd by former officer Derek Chauvin, convicted earlier of Floyd's murder, and that each of them knew what procedures could help Floyd but chose not to act. The assistant U.S. attorney argued that Tao and King specifically had the ability, authority, opportunity, means, and duty to intervene. But the defense painted a different picture, arguing their clients were inexperienced or had inconsistent training and did not have intent to harm Floyd. Tao's attorney adding, just because something has a tragic ending doesn't mean it's a crime. All three ex-officers have pleaded not guilty to a charge of deprivation of rights under color of law for allegedly failing to administer medical aid to Floyd. Tao and King are also charged with failing to intervene in Chauvin's use of unreasonable force and have pleaded not guilty to that count as well. The three officers are being tried together. A guilty verdict could mean fines for the three officers and sentences of up to life in prison. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. New video showing the moment two Utah National Guard Black Hawk helicopters were involved in a training accident crashing near a popular ski resort. Utah National Guard says no crew members or skiers at Snowbird Ski Resort were hurt yesterday morning. The official says as the first chopper landed, portions of the blade of the lead chopper separated and appears to have struck the second helicopter. The accident is under investigation. A new study is showing that gun-related deaths in the U.S. have overtaken car crashes in terms of number of years of life lost due to trauma-related deaths. It is important to note that the study measures mortality in total potential years of life lost. The research examined data from the CDC between 2009 and 2018. It found that in 2017 alone, there were 1.44 million years of potential life lost due to firearm deaths. That same year, motor vehicle crashes has caused a loss of 1.37 million years of potential life. The calculations were broadly based on the average U.S. life expectancy of 80 years. 538, about 45 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to tell you about a new alcoholic version of Mountain Dew. And it's the big 100 for this local World War II veteran. We'll hear about the experiences he still remembers, along with his birthday wish. Taking a look outside with live cam, we're now at 45 degrees. When I left this morning, we were in the 50s, now in the 40s, and expect to be in the 30s later today. 541, welcome back and good morning. A local veteran blowing out 100 birthday candles and celebrating a century full of experiences. Jonathan Cotto visited with this World War II veteran who served in the U.S. Army for 22 years. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie, and good morning, Max. The number 22 playing an important role in the life of World War II, James Veltri, and though he's turned 100, he says he's aiming to live 10 more. 
you know, there are not many World War II veterans left right now, and then being <laughs> that you're 100, you know. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel James Veltry chuckling as his son reminds him that he's part of a very special group of people. Today, World War II veteran Veltry celebrating 36,500 days of life. That's 100 years. His eyes, windows to a century of experiences, witnessing some of the most historical moments around the globe, including war. And this is right out, of, right out of high school, I think. I was about 19. Veltri was born February 22, 1922, or as he says, 222, 22, yeah. He served for 22 years. Veltri says he enlisted in the Army Air Corps and was later drafted. He flew 51 bombing missions over Germany, Austria, Poland, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Romania, accumulating over 6,000 hours. Main job I had was commander. Navigation training school. After his service, Veltri studied at Trinity University and majored in economics. But it's his accomplishments in the military that have brought him the most pride. His room in the Army residence community, proudly displaying photos, awards, and even his nicely pressed dress uniform. Any birthday wishes? Birthday wishes? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Wish for another couple of years. Ten decades of a life well lived in good health and surrounded by a loving family. A hand salute and the happiest of birthdays. Had a good career, I can't complain. And there you have it, World War II veteran James Veltry looking back at a life well lived with such positivity and appreciation. I did have an opportunity of asking Veltri if he had any words of advice for generations who are perhaps pursuing a career in the military. And he says, whether it's the military or whether it's college, just pursue it, do it, and do it proudly. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you so much and happy birthday, sir. Right now, 544, about 44 degrees. Coming up next, the Animal Defense League has a furry little pet that needs a new warm home this morning. I don't know if that necessarily qualifies as a lap dog, but um, it's sure, certainly making itself at home on Michelle's lap, so who's that? Any dog is a lap dog if you try. <laughs> so this is Mimsy. Um, Mimsy is one of our older babies that was recently brought over to us. Um, her previous owner was unfortunately not able to care for her any longer, um, but now she is with us. She's the sweetest thing. She is potty trained. Um, she gets along with other dogs, and as you can see, she isn't very comfortable being on furniture so if that's okay in your house she's ready to follow along with your rules but then who knows <laughs> she may get very uh, comfortable about taking up her space on the couch too so a <laughs> little bit on the shy side but look at those those eyes are just like give me a treat yeah. you know and she definitely comes out of her shell if you give her a little bit of time mm -hmm. um but she's just a little nervous she's camera shy yeah what y'all got going on <laughs> um well you know again we're just reiterating that everyone is looking for a home right now um and we have a ton of babies that are looking for homes just like Mimsy, who may be a little bit older and could be an amazing addition into your household. And so these babies, we have a lot of our diamonds. So those are our residents that have been with us for four months or longer. Mm -hmm. Their adoption fee is completely waived. Oh, really? And then for an adult dog, their adoption fee is just $60. Everyone is spayed or neutered, microchipped, up to date on all their vaccinations and preventions, receives every medical care that they need while they're with us and they just need to find their forever family. And again, you adopt one, you actually helped out too because that Absolutely. opens up room for another one. So, <laughs> 11300 Nacogdoches or the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, give them a jingle. There, those are, now she's perking oh, up. Yeah. What a sweetheart. Well, in this morning's consumer headlines, the alcoholic version of Mountain Dew is launched in several states. Mountain Dew's owner Pepsi partnered with Boston Beer Company to turn the soft drink into a caffeine-free alcoholic beverage. The 100 calorie spike seltzer is 5% alcohol by volume. Hard Mountain Dew comes in four flavors, Baja Blast, Watermelon, Black Cherry, and Original. It's already launched in Tennessee, Florida, and Iowa, but there are plans to expand to more states later this year. With detailed artwork as well. That's right. Interesting. Time now, 549, time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. No, thank you. I don't think I would have one of those. <laughs> uh, but it, I appreciate the design, though. It looks right? great. Um, other than that, the roads are also looking pretty great out there this morning. 1604 at Wiseman, 35 at Ritterman. Now, this is a problem spot. We told you about this earlier because of a crash has been reported out there. Now, let's go ahead and get a closer look to see how that's impacting those roadways. Because right now, those northbound lanes are where it's being reported. Again, right off of Ritterman, but no slowdown with traffic just yet. 
ahead, but the morning is still young. So if the scene is still out there, probably within the next 30 minutes or so, that's when we can likely start to see a buildup. So if you drive through that route, make sure you drive carefully. But let's go ahead and take that drive up a little bit over this way because we told you about some road work there off of 410. That's going to be finishing up around uh, 5 a.m. or should, a little bit past 5 a.m. So that should already be wrapped. But I thought I had a slide over here. Looks like I may have missed that, but there is some road work also happening off of 35. We'll get to that a little bit later on in the newscast. But again, the big problem is going to be right there along 35 at Ritterman. Make sure that you are driving carefully. Other than that, the roads are looking nice and quiet. So we'll hopefully it'll stay that way before we get into morning rush hour, guys. Hopefully yeah. Mike joins us now. Mike, if you uh, could tell people one thing about the forecast today, what would you say? Wind chill. Yeah, Wind chill. That's, that's the, the biggest thing that we're going to have to be uh, to be dealing with. And as far as uh, Stephen's question about the roads this morning, everything's going to be uh, good throughout the morning commute. This afternoon, we'll have a little bit of light rain around the area, so that's going to be an iffier situation. All right, uh, lots of clouds out there, and as I was saying last half hour, don't count on seeing a whole bunch of sunshine for the next few days. It's just going to stay very cloudy, and that's going to help to keep things obviously very cool. Wind chill temperatures down in the 20s, Kerrville, Bernie Stage, 41 out there at the airport, and where there's 50s right now, formulas don't come into play. It obviously feels cooler than that, but the colder air is going to continue to work its way on in here. And as far as the humidity, uh, again, yesterday we started off and it was very warm. It was very humid in the morning, and these dew point temperatures, measure moisture in the atmosphere, have dropped down 25, 30, close to 40 degrees just in the past 24 hours. So that's how much drier air has moved on in here. And again, here is the this is that rapid update computer model. And yes, this does have at least the chance. And notice how it's not filling in too much as far as any sort of precipitation. Uh, there is the chance from, say, northern Bear County up into the hill country for perhaps a little bit of icing. But the moisture is very, very limited with this. And that's going to be the situation then overnight and even into tomorrow morning perhaps a, some light freezing rain on elevated surfaces. The ground we're not going to have to worry about just because it has been so warm yesterday and the day before that, obviously. Somewhat of a break in the action Friday as far as precipitation, maybe a, a leftover sprinkle or two, and then Saturday a better chance for some rain. Now, as far as any icing impacts, yes, there is the chance in primarily the hill country. However, it is going to be very, very minor at best. Now, of course, um, it doesn't take much and rain is going to be less than a tenth of an inch uh, liquid equivalent, but you know anything if it freezes can make things kind of slippery. So that'll just be something to look out for, but it's not going to be a huge issue. However, you go further up to the north, if uh, you're going to be doing any traveling, you may want to think twice about that. Dallas all the way up in through portions of the uh, but the central plain states and into the mid Mississippi Valley and boy cold and damp the next couple of days. We are going to be staying only in the or dropping. I should say down into the 30s and even lower than that in the hill country later on this afternoon and then 40 for high temperatures the next couple of days. Morning lows are going to be close to freezing just kind of flirting with that here in town. Obviously cooler in parts of the hill country and those light little showers, maybe some freezing drizzle in portions of the hill country and finally get back up to 60 by about Sunday. It's going to be cold the next couple of days. All right, today it's going to be cold. 39 degrees will continue that slow, steady decline with temperatures. Of course, the wind is going to make it feel colder than that. A couple of light little sprinkly showers there, but rain chances themselves are not that great, and they're may be some freezing rain up in portions of the hill country. Very, very light freezing rain, freezing drizzle 36 by later on this afternoon. Starting off freezing tomorrow here in town. Same thing on Friday, only 40 for high temperatures. Still breezy in the next couple of days. Rain chances really drop off on Friday, almost nil. They come back up on Saturday, 45 degrees. It's going to be kind of a raw day on Saturday. Good day to just hunker down inside. And then finally, some sunshine on Sunday and more by Monday back up into the, uh, the 60s. So up in the hill country, yes, a little bit of light freezing rain is possible. But again, the rain chances themselves are not that great. Uh, so, but just keep your guard up just in case. Mm -hmm. Yep, just on the elevated uh, surfaces. And bundle up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 554, about 44 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, 403, Fireball one, Daily four, 3633, Fireball seven. Cash five numbers, 113, 17, 28, 35, and Mega Millions number 6, 17, 22, 57, 62, Mega Ball of 3, the Mega Plier 3.
coming up here on GMA, we have so much to get to, but of course we begin with the latest from Ukraine and the growing threat of war. President Biden announcing wide-ranging sanctions against Russia and threatening more. Our reporters are live throughout the region. You're going to see that and so much more right here on Good Morning America. And ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, how your regular trips to the bathroom could help with your health thanks to a toilet seat that acts like a Fitbit. And a spike in property crime has police strongly advising everyone not to leave things in plain view in your vehicle. And clients of the local housing district are set to lose their homes if they don't pay back rent. We'll tell you about options that are available. And we're tracking traffic on Transkite, I-37 at Jones Avenue, Loop 410 at Starcrest. We'll get an update from Stephen and how much colder it will get throughout the day today from meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Russia appears to be still building up more troops along the Ukraine border amid global backlash and more severe economic sanctions. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. In less than a week, back rent must be paid or multiple clients of the San Antonio Housing Authority will lose their homes. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're in the 40s now. When I left the house, we were in the 50s and we're going to be in the 30s later today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, the 23rd. Thanks for joining us today. Waking up a little colder than yesterday, and I actually enjoy the 43 degrees because we're going to dip down even mm. lower. It's going to be unbelievable. The question is, with the colder air here and then maybe some moisture starting to head this way as we head into the end of the week, where do things stand, Mike? A uh, little bit of light freezing rain, freezing drizzle in portions of the Hill Country is possible, but the moisture is really limited, and that's kind of the, the determining factor, obviously. But uh, when you're talking about temperatures, 50. Yesterday, 85. Today, wow. mid 30. 50 degree difference in afternoon wow. temperatures. So, uh, yeah, it's going to stay very cold and wind chills. We got that to deal with as well. There's nothing going on out there right now, just plenty of clouds and don't count on seeing much sunshine until probably later in the weekend. We have temperatures, and again, there's a bad uh, thermometer out there in Helotus, so just disregard that. But right now, 35 Kerrville, 36 Bernie Stage. We're at 43 right now here in town, and we started off about mid-50s when I got into work this morning, and it was mid and even upper 50s just after midnight, so we've been slowly, steadily dropping down with temperatures. And then, of course, we have the wind to deal with and gust of 35 out there at the airport. I mean, that just kind of just just cuts right through with those wind chill temperatures. Feels like 34 here in town, 20s in portions of the hill country, and the mold is on the moderate side. Update account is going to be coming out in a couple of hours, uh, just after 7 o'clock. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Mountain Cedar since we've had some breezy conditions overnight. Temperatures and may have to adjust this a little bit more as we continue to cool off even quicker than expected. We will continue to drop down and like I said, 50 degrees, maybe even more than that as far as the difference between yesterday and uh, this afternoon. Wind out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour. I'd initially thought we'd be mid 30s by right around dinner time, maybe even cooler than that. And then it will continue to cool off and it's not going to get much better over the next uh, couple of days as far as temperatures. We'll be hard pressed to even hit 40 the next couple of days. We'll talk about the, the rain chances and the chance for any sort of a uh, freezing precipitation and a closer look at the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, any big problems out there? Well, thankfully, some of the problems we saw earlier, Mike, look like they have just cleared out. Let's go ahead and get a closer look. Looks like someone may be having trouble there at I-10 at the Y. Watch out for this uh, stalled vehicle out over there. 37 at Southeast Military, still a very quiet shot from Transguide. But other than that, the roads are looking uh, pretty much in great shape this morning. However, we did spot some problems out there. Let's go ahead and bring your attention right here to 35 Northbound at Ritterman Road. Now, now, if you have been with us, you know about this crash, but if you're just waking up with us, this was reported sometime after five this morning. Good news is it wasn't causing issues for drivers in those northbound lanes, and I was just checking those trans guide cameras. Looks like those flashing lights have gone out, and that means the crash may have cleared, but either which way, drive carefully through those areas. There could be some minor debris still out there, but nothing too big right now. Let's go ahead and drive down over here. We had that stall off of I-10 at the Y. You saw that in that trans guide camera, not causing issues, but as you know, the morning is getting busy. 
busy, so you got to watch out when people have car trouble out there this morning. Bird's eye view of the map shows more green, and we love to see it as we're getting closer to that morning rush hour. So drive carefully, and if you're traveling into San Antonio, make sure you are driving carefully as well. But thankfully, no delays just yet. 37 northbound Pleasanton to downtown, 28 minutes, 19 if you're coming in from Castroville on Highway 90, and 17, little time from Lytle on 35 northbound. No delays just yet. Morning still young, though. We'll keep a close eye. Looks like this person's still having trouble out there at 281. We'll give you all the updates coming up in the next few moments. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man fighting for his life following a shooting at a sports bar on the east side. All unfolding a little before 1230 this morning at JD Sports Bar on Southeast Loop 410, not far from Rigsby Avenue. Police say an argument started inside the bar and spilled out into the parking lot. That's when police say one man pulled out a gun and shot the other male in the chest multiple times. The victim was taken to a hospital in critical condition. He fled the scene but was later detained by police. Katrina Weber is staying on top of the story and will join us in our next half hour with a live report. Well, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden will be visiting San Antonio today. She's expected to arrive later this morning. Sarah Costa joins us live in the newsroom with a look at her schedule in the Alamo City and why she's visiting. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, she has a packed schedule today, starting with her arrival at Joint Base San Antonio Kelly Field at 11 a.m. From there, she will travel to Mays Cancer Center, home of the UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center. According to her official schedule, 1145 a.m., she will tour the facility and take part in a listening session focused on cancer health disparities in the Latino community. At 2.30 p.m., the First Lady will visit Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. She will tour a child development center there and participate in a discussion concerning military children with disabilities, which is part of the White House's Joining Forces initiative. Then at 4.30 p.m., she will leave the Alamo City. Her visit to UT Health is part of the Biden-Harris administration's Cancer Moonshot initiative. White House officials say it aims to cut the cancer death rate in half over the next 25 years and improve the experiences of people living with cancer. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Thousands of San Antonio Housing Authority residents are up against the clock as they face evictions if they can't pay past due rent. So come this Monday, Saha's eviction moratorium ends since March 2020, tenants have been given a break. The moratorium has been extended five times now, but no more. Right now, almost $5 million in back rent is due. We're trying to balance, um, you know, what the community is doing, uh, what other um, utility companies are doing. We said it's time. Our goal is not to evict um, our families. Our goal is to keep them housed, but they have to communicate. PETA says they will work with families to come up with a repayment plan and they'll even help them apply for rental assistance. Now anyone who decides to apply for the city's emergency housing assistance program, you need to act quickly. The deadline is March 1st and after that, no more applications will be accepted because of funding availability. The race for Texas's 28th congressional district is intensifying, and that means more campaign ads. So you're about to see a lot more of those ads. The primaries are a little less than a week away. There are 10 candidates in all, Republican and Democrat, vying for the position. In the race for Democrat, Jessica Cisneros and Henry Cuellar are getting the most attention right now. Cisneros trying to unseat Cuellar, who's been in Congress since 2005. And yesterday, Massachusetts U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren was in town to campaign for Cisneros on the east side. I think the people of Texas understand that someone who actually fights for health care for everyone is the kind of person who will fight for them. We're offering an alternative vision for what South Texas can be, that we can have an area that has health care, that has good paying jobs, good paying union jobs. Cisneros took the opportunity to outline the differences between she and her Democratic rival, saying she supports reproductive rights and the new Green Deal, Green New Deal rather. Cuellar has slammed Cisneros' positions, arguing her policies would kill jobs in the oil and gas industry. She wants to eliminate 40,000 jobs uh, in my congressional district. Uh, that not only cuts jobs, but that also affects the, um, uh, the, uh, you know, the tax base for school districts. Back in 2020, Cuellar beat Cisneros by four points in the primary. 
608 right now. Fears of a larger Russian attack remain this morning after President Biden declared for the first time yesterday that President Vladimir Putin has begun his military invasion of Ukraine. And the president also unveiling what he says is the first of many significant economic sanctions meant to hurt Russia. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, the international backlash against Russia intensifying as new video shows military vehicles in Russian-controlled separatist regions of eastern Ukraine. The Ukraine government says Russia-backed rebels are firing into government-held areas, appearing to be stoking a military action and a pretext for Russia to use for war. New images from private satellite company Maxar shows a buildup of Russian military supplies near Ukraine's border. The U.S. believes the Kremlin is also stocking up on blood supplies. You don't need blood unless you plan on starting a war. 800 additional U.S. troops, along with fighter jets and helicopters, are being repositioned to support NATO allies in the region. President Biden condemning what he says is the beginning of a Russian invasion of Ukraine. In response, the U.S. is imposing punishing sanctions on Russian banks, business elites and their families. The Kremlin is also blocked from trading on American and European markets. No Russian financial institution is safe if the invasion proceeds. Germany went ahead and froze this crucial natural gas pipeline known as Nord Stream 2, which runs from western Siberia into Germany. That will also have a big impact on Russia. The move comes after President Vladimir Putin declared two Russian-backed separatist regions in eastern Ukraine as independent and then deployed his military in the so-called Donbass region, where rebel forces control about a third of the land. Analysts say Putin may also also try to claim more of the region. His plan all along has been to invade Ukraine. President Biden threatening more sanctions if Russia doesn't back down. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? And President Biden also warns that sanctions against Russia to, quote, defend freedom will cost Americans here some pain at the gas pump. Gas prices have already jumped more than 20 percent in the last month. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Back here in the U.S., I-84 in Oregon had to be shut down after close to 100 cars were involved in accidents. As officers arrived on scene, they reported hearing additional crashes happening behind them. As you can see, winter weather is being blamed. Medical and fire personnel were also called out there. No word yet on the number of injuries. A father in New York is reliving the agony of being on the phone with his son as the car he was riding in was stolen. So in the video, you can see someone jump into the driver's side of that orange car. What you can't see is the 11 year old boy in the passenger seat. The suspect takes off. The young boy is on his phone texting his dad, telling him they are speeding at 100 miles per hour. He tells his father they have crashed twice. Dad is tracking his son's iPhone to figure out where he and the car were trying to get to him. That suspect eventually lets the boy out of the car and the boy called his dad. They were reunited. To get their kids a phone if they don't have one and and always take the take the key out of the car. Don't ever leave your kid unattended in the car, not even for one minute. The boy was taken to the hospital to be checked out because he had some minor neck pain from those crashes. Police are still looking for the suspect. A boat chase off the coast of Cabo San Lucas ends with three suspects in custody for drug smuggling. Mexico's army sees three tons of cocaine off Mexico's Pacific coast. The high speed chase took place about 68 miles nautical miles from the resort city of Cabo. The three suspects are facing charges. According to the Mexican Navy, they are trying to disrupt illegal drug production and distribution in the Sea of Cortez area. Right now, 612, uh, now down to about 43 degrees. And Sony is ditching multiple cables to connect to virtual reality. The new feature the electronics company is now releasing. And we're going to tell you about uh, something that you probably have been dying to have in your life. It's a smart toilet seat. <laughs> And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are at 43 degrees now. We're going to drop down to the 30s. It's going to be a cold one. Be prepared. We'll be right back. And turning now to the pandemic here in Bear County, another three people have died from COVID. Metro Health is also reporting 544 new cases. 469 COVID patients are in our hospitals this morning and 132 of them are in the ICU and 65 are on ventilators. 
So taking a regular seat in the bathroom could help improve your health. That's according to some researchers studying a toilet seat that behaves kind of like a Fitbit smartwatch. They're investigating a toilet seat that monitors a person's heart rate blood pressure and even blood oxygenation. A group of students at the Rochester Institute of Technology came up what they're calling the heart seat. So as part of a clinical study, the seats will be installed in some Jew Jewish senior life apartments in New York. Got to think of a more clever name than that. Something like the seat buddy or something like that. <laughs> the seat buddy, uh, seat, like seat. it's your best friend. <laughs> seat, seat mate, who knows. Very interesting. 617 right now. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. That'd be one of the things I love in my bathroom on the side, you know, along with a smart TV, a seating area, a refrigerator. Everything. I don't think I'd ever leave. Right? Yeah, as long as it's comfortable too, right? Okay. <laughs> Well, we know that drivers are getting up and getting out of this morning, so just be able to look at. We've had this stalled vehicle out there of I-10 at the Y for a little while now. Still trying to pinpoint which direction this is in, but you can see that vehicles uh, that are actually making their way through there without any trouble. Just make sure, move over, slow down. That person's trying to get the help that they need to get out of that area and to get to where they need to be safely. Make sure you do the same. Let's go ahead and start with the map, and uh, that's right now again at the Y, as you can see there. We'll pinpoint that direction and find out where you need to watch out for, but let's take that drive up here to 35. I told you about some road work that was going on up there that started a little bit earlier, uh, actually on Wednesday, February 23rd, and that's going to be lasting up until the 25th. So we have about maybe two days to go or so. That's going to be going on from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, a single lane closure and shoulder closure of the southbound frontage road from O'Connor Road exit to the O'Connor Road intersection. So keep that in mind. We tend to see a little bit of a buildup there already with traffic, so this road work will likely lead to some slight slowdowns for drivers. Other than that, that bird's eye View of the map does show we're in great shape at 618 getting into morning rush hour without major issues, but make sure you watch out for situations like this. Drive carefully out there. And before I forget, we want to wish Case Hatton Engineer David Sepulveda a happy birthday oh, today. Yeah, happy birthday. Been here longer birthday. than any of the people <laughs> in this studio. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know you can hear us, so happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, David. Happy birthday. Something's broken in the morning. It's like where David. Is it? <laughs> hey, make sure you bundle up this morning and uh, don't even necessarily need to warm up the car. That's going to be the case tomorrow, though, as well as Friday. Temperatures are going to continue to just their slow decline throughout the day and very windy out there. Wind out of the north at about 15, 25 miles per hour. And after school, then we're going to be just hovering right around freezing here in town, definitely in portions of the hill country. A couple of light little showers out there. Although light is the uh, operative word, not a whole lot of precipitation in this forecast. Don't get used to seeing this uh, anytime in the next couple of days as far as a sun's a beautiful picture, but um, we're going to keep plenty of clouds around. I don't think we see a, a maybe by Friday afternoon or then again by Sunday. We see some sunshine in here, so plenty of clouds hanging around. No precipitation. Nothing is showing up on radar in our area as of right now. Wind chill temperatures. This is really the big story is how windy and cold it's going to be. Wind chills are in the 20s in parts of the hill country, mid 30s here in town and it will just continue to get colder. Here's the uh, one computer model, which I think does a pretty good job in depicting the fact that there's not going to be a heck of a lot of rain slash any sort of uh, freezing light rain or drizzle out there. And this is going to be throughout the day where we have just that chance for some of it here and there. Very spotty, perhaps a bit more tonight and then going into tomorrow morning. But again, overall, it is not going to be a huge impact. A uh, little bit on the elevated surfaces. We don't have to worry about the surface, the, the ground or um, roads, sidewalks, things like that, just because, you know, 85 on Monday, 85 yesterday. That's here in town. So the ground is very, very warm. But again, it's the elevated surfaces. And uh, throughout the day tomorrow, we will have a bit more of that. But again, it's not going to be a huge impact. Very small throughout portions of the hill country. Country. There are winter weather advisories posted, but that's well north of our area, so there's nothing around here. And again, the potential ice impacts are minor at best in portions of the hill country. It doesn't take much, though. I mean, it could have a little slippery spot. Just want to take it easy. But if you are uh, heading up to the north or to the northeast, that's where it is going to be. Uh, not a good situation as far as the uh, the winter weather up there. Wind chill forecasts, like I said, this is going to be the big story because wind chills are going to be down in the uh, 20s and teens, perhaps better by tomorrow afternoon. But then by Friday morning, we're going to see the, some of the coldest wind chills around here and going into the weekend. Then we will have uh, still cold temperatures, not as windy on Saturday, but then some better rain chances by Saturday. And here's the G whiz for this morning temperatures. 
23 below at International Falls, even Omaha, one below, and then wind chill temperatures 16 below at Wichita and four below in Oklahoma City. Yes, yeah, Mark's a G whiz. Yes, indeed, that is a G whiz. Uh, forecast around here today, we are going to continue to see temperatures just slow decline throughout the rest of today. Upper 30s by noon. A little bit of light rain here and there. Again, it's going to be very few and far between. There is the possibility with those temperatures kind of hovering around freezing in the hill country, maybe some uh, freezing drizzle, freezing rain on contact on some of the elevated surfaces. And then 36 by later on this afternoon. And we are going going to be continuing to drop down a little bit more and right around freezing tomorrow morning as well as uh, Friday morning highs only around 40 both days breezy rain chances again are not that great but with those temperatures hovering around freezing perhaps on some of the uh, elevated surfaces there could be some freezing drizzle freezing rain and then Saturday the better chance for some rain 45 degrees That'd be nice. We get just just get a cold, wet day on Saturday. Something significant because mm -hmm. it's not going to be significant uh, rain the next few days, and then by, uh, up to 60 by Sunday. What kind of yeah. a mixed bag there for last week in a rodeo? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. But at least maybe oh. the payoff will be Sunday. Mm -hmm. yeah. Warmer weather, Ugh. hopefully. All right. Time right now: 6:23, 42 degrees. And Facebook users have a new tool to make publishing live or long-form content easier. Need long-lasting freshness? Try Febreze Unstoppable's Touch Fabric Spray. It doesn't just eliminate odors. Simply shake and spray to unlock the breakthrough power of touch-activated scent technology that lasts even hours later. That's because Febreze Touch stores scent in your fabrics, so you get bursts of freshness with every touch. Your whole world will come alive. Welcome home to fresh with Febreze Touch. Febreze, <sighs> la, 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 la. With age comes more. Get more with Neutrogena Retinol Pro Plus, a powerful 0.5% retinol that's also gentle on skin for wrinkle results in one week. Neutrogena for people with skin. Welcome back. 626 Meta has launched Facebook Reels. The platform, which works a lot like TikTok, is now available in more than 150 countries. Facebook is also adding new editing features to Reels, including a video clipping tool handy for creators who publish live or long-form content. Sony has revealed its newest virtual reality headset. The company says the white and black color scheme was designed with the PlayStation 5 in mind. It connects to the console with a single cable and no word on a release date or the cost. Right now, 627, about 42 degrees. San Antonio police say leaving items in your vehicle is contributing to a specific crime. That story coming up next in our half hour of GMSA. A man is in the hospital at this hour fighting for his life after an argument outside a sports bar escalates into gunfire. We are live on the east side with the latest. And a quick look at the roads with Transguy. Looks like there's a stalled vehicle there at Loop 410 at Ingram Road, but things are moving there. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. San Antonio police say two men get into it inside a bar, then the trouble spills outside, ending with the shooting. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. And as you can tell from Katrina's live shot, Wednesday means wind chills are back here in South Texas. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 23rd. Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. And I definitely put aside the heavier jacket for my daughter this morning when she goes to school. Probably the smart play for parents and uh, anybody heading out and about today because Mike says the temperatures only drop from here on out. One of those days where we hit the high temperature probably after midnight, right? Yeah, right yeah. after midnight. Wow. And it was in the, the mid 50s mm -hmm. and it's continued to drop down. We're in the, the lower 40s now, mid to lower 40s and 30s. When we came into work, when I came into work about uh, three this morning, it was still up in the uh, low to mid 50s. So continues to cool off and you know you think about jackets for the kids some mornings it's or some days it's where you need jacket in the morning and not in the afternoon 
It's not the situation today. Like Steph was saying, it's only going to get colder throughout the rest of the day. Temperature right now stands at 43, dew points 29. So the air is really dried out in behind that front as well. And look at that. That's the sustained wind out of the north, primarily at 20 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. 36 Kerrville and Comfort, 45 Port SA, 43 at Randolph. Again, this is a uh, bad reading uh, out there at Lotus. The colder air will continue to filter on in here. Wind gusts right now, so 20 mile per hour sustained winds out at the airport, gusting to 35, gusting to 32 at New Braunfels. It is going to stay windy all day long. So yes, wind chills are definitely going to be something to get your attention all day long. It feels like 27 Kerrville, 26 Bernie stage right now, and 34 out there at the airport. Molds on the moderate side. This is yesterday's reading. Mountain Cedar still hanging on in there. It's going to be interesting to see when the updated count comes out in about a half hour, 45 minutes. If Mountain Cedar, if we're finally done with it or getting one last shake at the trees out there. Cloudy, windy, colder throughout the rest of the day and some light rain. There's nothing on radar right now. A little bit of light rain. Little and light are the operative words here. It's not going to be, uh, unfortunately, any, any significant rain out there. But what does fall could ice could become freezing rain in portions of the hill country. Very small chance for that. And that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. Again, maybe a little bit of uh, freezing rain in portions, primarily of the hill country and even northern Bear County. Then we go into the weekend. Better chance for showers mid 40s, though, on Saturday. This will be the hopefully more significant rain on Saturday and will finally warm up somewhat by Sunday. All the details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authorities, Stephen Cavasso, see anything big going on out there? Well, I'd say that stall seemed to be the big problem right now, Mar uh, Mike. Uh, right now, 410 North at Ingram, you can see that we have a vehicle there that is experiencing some trouble. Our friends over at Transguide have pinpointed that camera right there, so you can see that it's off in the shoulder lane. However, still trying to work on a few directions where we're seeing some of these stalls right now that the site where we're seeing those trans guide cameras aren't necessarily showing a whole lot right over here at I 10 at the Y where again we're trying to find out where this stall has been pinpointed but the one you just saw looks like it could be over there in the westbound lanes of 410 so watch out for that but overall the morning right now is shaping up to look pretty green you can see no other delays that we're spotting in the area again just make sure you're driving carefully especially when you're seeing those stalled vehicles out there you want to make sure you move over and slow down traveling into San Antonio no delays just yet 20 four minutes coming in from 87 in Lavernia, but that's pretty normal at this hour. Other than that, as we're getting closer to that morning rush, we can't expect to see more people getting the morning going, so just make sure to take it easy and be safe. Move over and slow down a little too close for comfort here in this trans guide shot. Guys, yeah, I agree. Thank you, Stephen. Trouble inside an east sidebar became an even bigger problem outside. San Antonio police say one man shot another after an argument. This happened overnight near Loop 410 and Rigsby Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with the live report. Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police have a suspect in custody. How did they track him down? Well, it seems they didn't have to go too far. Police told me that they simply went off in the direction where people saw the suspect heading, and that is where they found him. Uh, police say they also recovered the gun that was involved in the shooting. This happened in the parking lot outside JD Sports Bar near Loop 410 and Rigsby. Officers were called to this business before 1230 this morning, found the victim suffering from several gunshot wounds. Police say he and another man had an argument inside the bar, and then after the trouble spilled out into the parking lot, the other man pulled the gun and fired. Uh, police say that victim was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital. That suspect again in custody, most likely answering questions right now from police. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Happening today, San Antonio ISD, along with the San Antonio Food Bank, is hosting a drive through food distribution today. The distribution is for families in SAISD and will be handed out on a first-come, first-served basis. So this is happening at 9 this morning over at Alamo Stadium. San Antonio Police warning our community about vehicle burglaries. They are on the rise. Most common item stolen weapons. So Sarah Costa joins us live in the newsroom with a look at the issue. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys, and think twice before you leave anything valuable in your vehicle. That's according to San Antonio police. They say thieves are targeting cars more often. Police say property crimes rose more than 4% in 2021 in a four week special operation between December and January. Undercover police recovered two hundred and thirty five thousand dollars worth of stolen goods from San Antonio vehicles. The most targeted item thieves are looking for are guns, according to police. 
Just in one case, undercover officers recovered 40 firearms and they were able to make about 30 arrests connected to the burglarized vehicles. The thefts are pretty spread out across the area, but Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says a lot of the thefts happened in parking lots of major restaurants, hotels and retail stores. Other common items stolen, soft and hardtop Yeti coolers, high-end cameras, and gaming consoles. Police say the best way to avoid being targeted is by not leaving valuables in your vehicle. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Programming note, Steve Spreister and Stephanie Jimenez will be sitting down with experts from around San Antonio tonight to talk about three important topics. What's on the ballot for the primary, the importance of the Latino vote, and the youth vote. Be sure to tune in for the breakdown tonight. You can watch it anywhere you stream starting at 7 o'clock. Now to the closing arguments at the trial of three former police officers charged in the death of George Floyd. We're getting new insight on what happened on that street in Minneapolis back in 2020. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. Jury deliberations are set to begin today in the case against three former Minneapolis police officers involved in George Floyd's death. Tutau, Alexander King, and Thomas Lane are charged with depriving Floyd of his civil rights by failing to administer aid when Officer Derek Chauvin pressed his knee into Floyd's neck for more than nine minutes. They're going to look at each individual officer's actions, what they did, what they didn't do during the time in which they were involved with Mr. Floyd. During closing arguments Tuesday, prosecutors said the officers chose to do nothing as Floyd died. And they accuse Officer Tao, Chauvin's partner, of doing nothing to stop the crime in front of him, saying instead he had chosen to argue and mock people who tried to intervene. Tao's lawyer called Floyd's death a tragic event, but said a tragedy is not a crime. This particular instance, I don't think speaks to that because we have innocent bystanders with no training at all that were aware that something was amiss. Prosecutors also showed video of King casually picking gravel from the tire of a police SUV as Chauvin mocked Floyd's pleas for help. Although Lane voiced concern for Floyd, prosecutors say Lane did nothing to give him medical aid. Defense attorneys placed the blame on Chauvin, the senior officer, arguing he took command of the scene. The former officers with him that day now face life in prison if convicted, but legal experts say the verdicts could vary. Each person has a level of responsibility, and these charges determine where each person lies on that level of responsibility. So you can absolutely see varying verdicts. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Happening today, the only Kentucky officer facing criminal charges in the botched Brianna Taylor police raid is expected to take the stand later today. Brett Hankinson is charged with shooting into Taylor's neighbor's apartment. In addition to hearing testimony from Hankinson, members of the jury will also be expected to tour Taylor's apartment. Hankinson's charges include three counts of wanted endangerment, a low level felony that is punishable by a maximum of five years in prison. Back here at home, a local veteran blowing out 100 birthday candles, celebrating a century full of experiences. Jonathan Cotto visited with this World War II veteran who served in the U.S. Army for 22 years. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Mark. According to the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, a little over 200 World War II veterans die every day. So any opportunity to celebrate a hero's 100th birthday is not only a privilege, but an absolute honor. You know, there are not many World War II veterans left right now, and then being <laughs> that you're 100, you know. Retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel James Veltry chuckling as his son reminds him that he's part of a very special group of people. Today, World War II veteran Veltry celebrating 36,500 days of life. That's 100 years. His eyes, windows to a century of experiences, witnessing some of the most historical moments around the globe, including war. And this is right out, of, right out of high school, I think. I was about 19. Veltri was born February 22, 1922, or as he says, 222, 22, yeah. He served for 22 years. Veltri says he enlisted in the Army Air Corps and was later drafted. He flew 51 bombing missions over Germany, Austria, Poland, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Romania, accumulating over 6,000 hours. Main job I had was commander. Navigation training school. After his service, Veltri studied at Trinity University and majored in economics. But it's his accomplishments in the military that have brought him the most pride. His room in the Army residence community, proudly displaying photos, awards, and even his nicely pressed dress uniform. Any birthday wishes? 
Birthday wishes? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Wish for another couple of years. Ten decades of a life well lived in good health and surrounded by a loving family. A hand salute and the happiest of birthdays. I had a good career, I can't complain. And there you have it, World War II veteran James Veltri. You gotta admit, his laugh is contagious. I did have an opportunity to ask him if he has any words of advice for younger generations considering a career in the military. And his words were, whether it's the military or whether it's college, do it and do it proudly. James Veltri, the biggest of happy birthdays. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. And Jonathan is sporting the accessory of the day. A nice scarf. Yes. 642, 42 degrees. And a lot of your favorite grocery items are in short supply these days. After the break, we're going to tell you three ways you can change your habits to find the items you're looking for. 645, welcome back to GMSA on your Wednesday. It's not a secret that a lot of items at the grocery store just aren't as available as they once were. However, there are ways to find what you're looking for. Consumer Reports has some tips to beat the shortages and still get you what you need. One recommendation, start early. It says deliveries from major manufacturers to the big grocery chains often arrive between 4 and 7 in the morning. And in some cases, that product is on the shelves by 8, but could be sold out by 10. Also, warehouse clubs like Sam's and Costco offer options for finding what you want. Those stores receive uh, 10 to rather 12 to 20 deliveries a week from brand manufacturers. That's way more than the 3 to 6 a week for a typical supermarket and some manufacturers like PepsiCo for its Gatorade line offer a product locator online to help track down the drink. You can also try reaching out to a manufacturer on Twitter or Facebook to help locate an item. Third party shopping apps like Basket may help as well. And don't underestimate the power of your fellow consumers. Nextdoor has helped people find hard to get goods just by asking. That is true. Let's check traffic at 647. Hey, good morning, Mark. Steph, we are taking a look at Trans Guide. I was just spotting a few uh, buildups there on 1604, but I 10 at the Y. We've had that stall out there for a little while. Other than that, 37 at Southeast Military, things look just fine there. But keep in mind, the morning is getting going. We're in that rush hour time, so we can see some problems starting to pop up in the next few moments. We're going to start here with that bird's eye view of the map. So you see that buildup already happening over there in the eastbound lanes of 1604 over on the northwest side. That is some construction going on over there. But let's go ahead and bring your attention right in here to I 10 at the Y, where that stall vehicle is being reported seeing that build up in the southbound lanes of 35 there so you got to watch out for that and make sure you give those drivers plenty of room when they have trouble out there on the roadways we're going to do some jumping around really quick 410 westbound at ingram road that stall was reported there looks like it may have just cleared out but we're starting to get new stalls that are popping up for instance right over here off 35 northbound at fm 1103 but as we were driving through the map you saw some build up in the southbound lanes of 35 so you got to watch out for that as well especially if you are coming in from new Braunfels. thankfully no delays just yet 28 minutes to downtown San Antonio construction wrapping up here 37 at Hackberry. Other than that, we're looking like we're in better shape, guys. Not too bad. One more thing yeah. to add to grocery store yes. story. Mm -hmm. Don't go buying 57 rolls of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. I agree. That's yeah. good because I only bought 55 the other oh, day. Oh, okay, good, so, Mark. Yeah. Thank you. 57 was the magic cutoff, Mike. Something <laughs> yes. like that. All right. Uh, yesterday, of course, was 222-22, and then in the afternoon, uh, Richard, I, I bow to you. I'm very envious of the fact that you got that right at wow. 2 22 p.m. So I saw a picture with a former colleague of ours yesterday and he had all this but in two dollar bills found out in front of him. Oh, oh pretty cool. Very pretty cool. Very cool. And you were correct, Mark. I was wrong. You had said yesterday it was also a palindrome day. Mm -hmm. I was thinking because it was all the same number. But yes, and every day this week is a palindrome because that's the only number that changes right there. So it'll read the same back and forth Two two. Today, two, two, three. Two, he two, said two, two. two. So so. All right, back to the weather. Um, it's, those, it's those little things that keep us entertained. We have plenty of clouds out there. Don't count on seeing much sunshine for the next few days. Wind chill temperatures, 34 in town, uh, 26 Kerrville right now. Wind chills are definitely going to be something to get your attention. We, we don't have anything showing up on radar right now. There will be a couple of light little showers that are going to develop. And I think this model does a good job of showing the fact that there's not going to be a heck of a lot out there, but with temperatures, you know, right around freezing, you don't have to worry about anything on the surface because 85 yesterday, 85 the day before the ground is warm enough, but uh, elevated surfaces, you know, power lines, trees, signs, things like that, uh, even some elevated roadways could could have a little bit of freezing rain, freezing drizzle on them. That's going to be the situation through today. 
into tonight and even uh, overnight and tomorrow. We'll have to watch it in Northern Bear County again. It's going to be a little bit. There's not a lot of uh, moisture out there to work with, but anything may possibly freeze on contact. We'll see somewhat of a break in the action as far as any precipitation goes on Friday. One or two of them out there. Then we get into Saturday and that's when we'll see some better rain chances, slightly warmer temperatures, so we won't worry about anything uh, freezing. And as far as the, the winter impacts from this, uh, it's not going to be much at all. Minor at best in portions of the hill country. Uh, but of course, you just want to take it easy on the roads a little bit. Uh, it doesn't take much as far as anything freezing on contact to cause problems further up to the north. Yeah, there's going to be a bigger problem up there throughout Oklahoma, and North Texas, and then going up in toward the uh, Central Plains states. Wind chill temperatures, that's really the big thing that's going to affect us all down in the uh, 20s and teens in many locations. Perhaps not as cold by Thursday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, but then by Friday morning, it's going to be really, really biting cold out there. And yeah, speaking of cold, 23 below International Falls right now, and wind chill is 39 below zero up there. That's just something to make it not feel as cold around here, I think. All right, temperatures will continue the slow, steady decline throughout the day, 38 by noon. Again, a little bit of light rain here and there, little being the operative word, and some of it could be freezing on contact in parts of the hill country. We'll be hanging around freezing, maybe freezing in your backyard by uh, late this afternoon and then tomorrow morning as well. Same thing on Friday morning. We'll make it up to 40 tomorrow as well as Friday, cold and still windy. And then Saturday, the better chance for some rain. Um, hopefully it's a little more on the significant side. Don't count on a bunch though and 45 for a high temperature on Saturday. So good day to stay inside and uh, I was going to say, you know, rearrange your closet, but no, don't do it yet because you, know, you need everything in there. <laughs> don't put yeah. away those winter items. No guarantees, at least for the next week. Nope. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. 651, about 41 degrees now. And if you have failed to stick to your New Year's resolution goals, experts say it's not too late. Tomorrow on GMSA, we have three tips to help you recover from resolution mistakes. Outside with live cam bundle up. We'll get the news you need to know before you go next. Good morning, everyone. Time now 655. Be on the lookout. Stalls seem to be the problem right now as traffic is getting moving there at 410 at Starcrest. But let's go ahead and get you that bird's eye view of the map. You can see some slowdowns at 1604, but bringing you in here to I-10 at the Y. We've had this stall there for a little while. Starting to see that build up there getting onto the 35 southbound lanes there. So just be careful out there, Mike. Temperatures are cold and going to get colder throughout the day. We've got some blustery winds out there gusting close to 30 miles per hour. Wind chill temperatures feels like 33 at the airport, 26 right now in Kerrville. And We'll see a little bit of light rain developing as the the day rolls on. Some of that may be freezing in parts of the hill country, but it is going to be very, very light and we'll continue to drop down into the low 30s. Then as we go into the next couple of days, we'll be very close to freezing once we get into tomorrow morning as well as Friday morning and high temperatures only about 40s. Thank you, Mike. Wow. Bundle up out there. Be careful and we'll see you back here at 9.